This is Jeremy Lemon with ACS Blog, and we're with uh, Professor Adam Winkler, a constitutional law scholar, professor at uh, UCLA Law School. We're in an event regarding the uh, Supreme Court decisions in D.C. v. Heller and McDonald v. Uh, Chicago. Uh, how are those two Supreme Court decisions playing out amongst lower federal courts? Well, there's been a lot of cases. Uh, every criminal who's charged with a, a crime dealing with guns has seen Heller and McDonald as a get-out-of-jail-free card. Uh, so you're seeing uh, the federal courts being inundated by these Second Amendment challenges. And the courts are genuinely confused about how to address the constitutional question in these cases. Uh, there's been challenges to any number of different kinds of laws, uh, and the courts have responded with any number of different kinds of analyses of the constitutionality. They've Some courts have applied strict scrutiny, some have applied uh, intermediate scrutiny, some have applied categorical rules to try to address the question. Uh, the courts are genuinely confused. If there's one unifying theme in the court cases, however, is that they uphold gun control. Virtually every law that's been challenged on Second Amendment grounds has been upheld. Okay. Well, what does that say, though, about the confusion, then? It, does, it, uh, does it matter a whole lot? So far, it hasn't mattered a lot uh, if you're a proponent of gun control because you're seeing these laws generally survive. Um, but it matters, I think, in the long term. I think that the, this kind of confusion makes it difficult to know, uh, if you're a lawmaker, what kinds of laws you can pass. Uh, you might think, okay, well, the laws are all surviving, so I can pass anything. But that's probably not the right uh, uh, lesson to take from these Supreme Court cases. And the more unsettled the lower courts are, the more likely it is that the Supreme Court is going to take another case to try to provide some clarity. One of the primary roles the Supreme Court has is to create uniformity in the federal system and to uh, displace the kind of confusion and unsettled nature of the law that bubbles up in all these different courts. So I think it leads to a higher likelihood that the Supreme Court's going to step in uh, and provide some clarity somewhere down the line. Okay. What kind of gun regulations uh, right now uh, are in the most danger of not surviving because of uh, the Heller case and then McDonald. Well, we're seeing a bunch of challenges right now to uh, permitting for concealed carry of firearms. Almost every state allows concealed carry of firearms. The real question is whether uh, you can require permitting for that and what can you require as a, a matter of that permitting. Many states provide what they call shall issue permitting and that basically means if you meet a series of uh, relatively objective requirements, uh, you can get a firearm. Other states have uh, what they call discretionary permitting, uh, where it requires for, the, for someone to have a permit to carry a firearm that you show something like good moral character. Those laws, while uh, popular in some areas, I think they're in real danger of being struck down. I, I don't think the way the current court envisions constitutional rights um, justifies them being limited to only those who have good moral character. The kind of subjective standard that police chiefs could use to discriminate against uh, disfavored groups, perhaps. And so I think those laws are the most likely to be invalidated. Okay, I'll let you go in a, in a few seconds here. But for those uh, groups and individuals that are concerned about gun violence, and there's plenty of it in a lot of places all over the country. Uh, how, do, how do they go about uh, constructing or helping to construct laws that can withstand uh, constitutional uh, uh, challenges. Yeah, well I think that's it's one of the big challenges because we don't know what standards the courts are going to use to judge the constitutionality of law, so uh, they're left kind of blind. I think the biggest challenge they face though is not in the courts. The courts are upholding gun control laws left and right. The biggest challenge for gun control advocates is in the, in the legislatures. They cannot get laws passed uh, because it's hard to get the political muscle uh, behind gun, gun control laws. And the truth is Heller and McDonald is going to make that even more difficult in the sense uh, uh, of uh, lawmakers who are maybe hedging. They don't really know whether the Second Amendment protects an individual right to bear arms. Well, now uh, the lobbyists can come and say, hey, it really does protect an individual right to bear arms. You should veto this law. Uh, so the main challenge for them, I think, really is in the legislatures uh, getting the political coalition together, not so much what standards are going to satisfy the courts. Okay. You have a, a new publication coming out regarding gun, uh, Thank you. Th th this uh, controversy. Uh, tell me a little bit about the book, please. So the book's called Gunfight. 
the battle oh, yeah. over the right to bear arms in America, and it comes out in uh, summer of 2011 by W.W. W. Norton, uh, is the publishing house. And the book argues that while we've always had uh, an individual right to bear arms in this country, and I believe that that is the best interpretation of the Second Amendment and of state constitutional provisions, we've also always had gun control. Uh, and the story of uh, America's so-called gun culture uh, is that we've always tried to balance the gun rights with uh, reasonable efforts to protect public safety by regulating uh, the most dangerous people or the most dangerous guns. And so my book argues that while we have a gun culture, that's right, we also have a gun control culture uh, and that we should tell both sides of that story, not just one. Okay.